What up, motherfucks? It's your boy, the hater. And uh, before we get started with today's video, I just want to do a special thank you for everyone that helped me get to a thousand subscribers, motherfucks. We did it together. You know what I mean? Now, here's the thing about that. You know, little known fact: one of my goals was to see if I could get to a thousand subscribers within any given period of time, but without any kind of help. So, as I've said previous times. In this channel, no one from my personal life follows me or is subscribed to this channel, right? Unless they're lying to me. You know what I mean? Like four or five people know, and like two people know the name of my channel, right? So my goal was to get to a thousand by myself without help from anybody, without any kind of promotion, without any kind of clout chasing. That's why it pissed me off when I was accused of those things, right? Because that's like the antithesis of who I am as a person. You understand me? So now that we've gotten to a thousand. You know, now I'm going to start exploring YouTube a little bit more and we're going to do things a bit different and dare I say a bit better from now on. Things are going to get better around here for sure, motherfucks. Not to say that things aren't good, but I'm saying that I'm going to try very hard starting soon to see what I can do and see what people want um, on Facebook. I mean, on Facebook, on fucking YouTube, motherfucks. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, thanks again, everyone. I appreciate all of you. Um, and you have my, my, my gratitude, you know what I mean? Shout out to all of you for, uh, supporting me, uh, with your views and subscriptions, motherfucks. And, uh, once we start getting to the next level of haters, I'm very excited that all of you guys will be the first 1000 motherfucks, Alibaba and the 1000 thieves, motherfucks. <laughs> all right. Now let's get to this review of WrestleMania backlash. First of all, let's start with the name. WrestleMania Backlash. Backlash is an iconic pay-per-view, in my opinion. I might be biased because it's the first pay-per-view that I ever ordered, I believe. No, that's Royal Rumble. But Backlash was a very, very big one that I ordered once when I was a kid, and I really enjoyed it. So the fact that, uh, you know what I mean, that people now just tie it into the WrestleMania is kind of lame, right? It really shows that they have no faith in the Backlash brand, you know? This pay-per-view did not feel like a pay-per-view. There were a few moments where it felt like a pay-per-view, but for the most part, it felt like a glorified episode of Monday Night Raw or SmackDown, right? First up on the pre-show, which I didn't watch, Sheamus beat Ricochet. Who gives a shit? This, this, this is like a, a match that might happen on Raw or it might not, you know what I mean? It's, it's not a match anyone wants to see. It could be on Saturday Night Main Event just as, just as well. So no one cares. Pre-show match, no one gives a damn, right? Next up, we have Rhea Ripley versus Asuka and Charlotte Flair. Just proving once and for all that there's no continuity whatsoever uh, with respect to women's wrestling. You know, last year, Charlotte Flair is beating up uh, Rhea Ripley. And now this year, Rhea Ripley is beating up Charlotte. Same thing's going to happen next year. Next year, Asuka's going to be beating up both of these broads. You know what I mean? There's no, like, continuity. It's just like this year, we've decided that Bayley's going to be the champion. Next year, we've decided that Sasha Banks is going to be the champion. You know? Like... There is no reason why Bailey was so good last year and wasn't good this year. You know what I mean? So whatever, it is what it is. And 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 it's fine. It's fine to kind of downgrade someone down the card. No, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But then to upgrade them again in a few years makes no sense to your boy. All right. Next up, we had Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. I don't know why this match was not a WrestleMania match. It should have been. You know what I mean? Did we really need to see? All, the, all those WrestleMania matches and not have enough room for this one? I don't know. Uh, this actually felt like a WrestleMania moment in the making. You know what I mean? So with, with that being said, I don't understand why it had to be like essentially a throwaway match on this throwaway pay-per-view. I mean, let's call it like it is, you know? So it's very, very odd to me that they went this route with it because this match actually has a storyline of sorts. It has a payoff. It has good wrestlers in it. So I don't know why this match couldn't be in WrestleMania, but Natalia and Tamina in a tag team turmoil match uh, should have been there. Or why, Why I don't know, like fucking Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn should be... Like Kevin, uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn would have been much better off in this pay-per-view, as would Sheamus and Riddle. As honestly would Apollo Crews and Big E. All the people that missed this pay-per-view should have been on this pay-per-view. And better people like Rey Mysterio should have been uh, at WrestleMania. But whatever it is, what it is. This match, considering what it was, it was pretty good. The Dirty Dogs feel like a good tag team, you know? 
They remind me a little bit of beer money in the sense that there's these two singles guys that are being put together in a tag team. They have some potential. The only problem is that Dolph Ziggler, like, I mean, nobody likes him. He's a jobber. This guy's never, never, ever, ever really been over, you know? So what are you going to do, right? Nothing. You're going to just deal with it. Meanwhile, Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio, obviously, they're a great tag team because they're a father and son tag team, the first ever. And the match started before it even started, actually, uh, with Dominic Mysterio getting attacked. So Rey Mysterio had to go in there two on one, right? Now, this is, this is pretty cool because Rey Mysterio is like is awesome so him doing it two on one is is fine like it's gonna be an entertaining two on one you know but obviously Ziggler and Robert Roode get the, the upper hand eventually uh what's it called uh Dominic comes back Rey Mysterio like not hot tags him but was gonna hot tag him but basically Dominic tags himself in he goes in there gets his ass beat thoroughly right they really did a good job of uh putting Dominic like in his place in this match like pretty much saying like all right kid you're a mysterious kid but you're still a jobber and you're still new and you need to hit the gym a little bit. I mean, let's be real, right? So that happened. Dominic went out there, got his ass beat a little bit. But eventually this led to Dominic uh, doing a hot tag on Ray, which allowed Ray Mysterio to go in and whip some ass thoroughly. Ray Mysterio hit the 619, tagged in Dominic. Ray Mysterio then like did a little baseball slide, um, like a like a face first baseball slide to the outside, and did a sunset flip bomb on uh, Dolph Ziggler. I think it was meant to be one of those like code reds, but whatever. He kind of bossed it a little bit and he slammed Dolph Ziggler onto the barricade. He's done that move several times as well, so it could have gone either way. And meanwhile, Bobby Roode was in the in the ring. Dominic hits the frog splash. It was a very shitty frog splash, I'm not gonna lie. But whatever. And he pins uh Rude. And uh Mysterio and Dominic are now tag team champions, mother fox. And then of course. We get the obligatory, Eddie Guerrero is like smiling from the heavens uh, type shit, right? Good for them. It was a good moment. It was a feel-good moment. It was a good match. It was a WrestleMania-worthy match. And WrestleMania would have had to have been like five, six minutes shorter, but it would still deserve to be there. Speaking of WrestleMania, we now had a follow-up of the Damien Priest Miz feud, right? The Lumberjack match. Throughout the whole night, John Morrison was running around trying to like find the Lumberjacks and talk to them, but they were all zombies, right? This was presented as if it was like a normal thing because some movie with Batista is going to come out that has zombies. So now all the Lumberjacks were zombies, you know? And they're like chasing Morrison backstage and all that other shit. And I'm just thinking to myself, and then like Adnan or whatever, one of these jabrones, one of these like new announcers, he's like, well, let me explain why this might be. Batista said on Twitter, like, get the fuck out of here. Batista said on Twitter, I don't give a fuck what he said on Twitter. Batista says, on Twitter, he was like, he was like, I'm not going to be able to make it basically because I have better things to do with my life. Um, but some of my friends are coming to WrestleMania Backlash. And that's clearly what he meant. Was that he, the zombies were going to go there. Now, all right. That could be fine and it could be cute and funny if the, the philosophy was, okay, like the, the, the zombies came in here, right? Because they were sent as a gag from Batista, right? Like Batista sent the zombies in as a gag, you know? And uh, therefore, we have to tolerate the zombies for a little bit, motherfucks. So that made sense. From that perspective, you know what I mean? Like, he said, like, a gag gift to WWE to promote his movie. But no, like, Adnan and, like, all these people are, like, hiding from the zombies. Like, they're pretending they're real zombies. Like, the way that Adnan explained it to everyone was, like, oh, Batista, like, set this up. Haha, ha, isn't that funny? The movie comes out Friday. But then the way that, like, they reacted to it was as if it was real zombies. And also, they keep saying how The Miz should be Johnny Cage. No, The Miz is, honestly, he's too bulky to be Johnny Cage. It's, I mean, typically I'd be okay with it, but based on the last Mortal Kombat movie, The Miz is like like 95% like bigger than everyone there. You know what I mean? He's at, he's almost twice the size of everyone, and he's like like 95% bigger than... I mean, the only one that's, that might be bigger is the Jax guy. I don't think he's bigger than The Miz. But like compared to like the Liu Kang and the, the new guy, Cole, The Miz would like look like... like like a, he would look at the great Khali next to these jabrones, you know, it would be like, oh, Sub-Zero is going to fight the Miz, but like, or Johnny Cage as, and the Miz plays him, but the Miz is like 50 times bigger and stronger than him. It's fucking stupid, you know? So there you have it. Um, that happened. No one really cared about that. Uh, next up, uh, oh, Damian Priest won. Who cares? We had Bianca Belair versus Bailey. I completely skipped this match. Just like I skipped the other women's match. Uh, Bianca Belair won. She used her hair somehow. Like, I mean... This has fallen flat. Like, no champion 
in WWE today, except for maybe Roman Reigns, is good. Let's be real. Like, even Lashley, like, it's 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 fallen flat. Like, he's had, like, an uneventful title run, right? What ifs, motherfucks? What ifs? Bobby Lashley uh, beat Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre in what was, like, a decent match, considering these are three big, big motherfucks. Drew McIntyre did a Michinoku driver on Braun, which was pretty badass. Like, it was almost unbelievable. But he did it. Uh, Lashley hits a spear, and he wins. Great. No one cares. Like, what is there to look forward to with Lashley anymore? Is he going to keep, keep doing the same shit again and again? He's not over. You know? Like, there's no benefit to someone beating Lashley at the end of this. You know? And quite honestly, I expected more from him. Now, I'm not saying there's more he can do, but I expected more. I expected more interesting things. You know? This is not interesting. Wrestling Drew McIntyre for nine months is not interesting. Cucks. Next up, we have Roman Reigns versus Cesaro. This was... A pretty good match. Now, here's the problem with this match. First of all, the other Uso, I believe his name is Jimmy. This guy has like, he must have hair extensions because last I checked his hair was short, but maybe he just started growing it back again, right? This guy, but it's like really long, you know, it's like way longer than Jey Uso's. I don't remember when they, when they cut their hair, how long ago it was, but nonetheless, this guy now has long hair and it's like yellowish brown. It's like a weird brown, like it's not his natural hair color, right? He's like dying it, I guess, to have his hair look more like white people hair. I don't know what, what other explanation there is. You know, these guys, like, for, for two proud Samoans, they're really leaning on, like, like blue eye contacts, right? Colored hair, and then acting like they're from, like, you know, like acting like they're from, like, the worst ghettos ever, right? They really, they, for, for two proud Samoans, these guys really take other people's shit and present them as their own. You know what I'm saying? The whole, like, the whole family, right? Acknowledge me. Shut up. You know what I'm saying? So, the match starts. Um, oh, also, one of the one of the premises was that the other Uso, Jimmy Uso, his new thing is, like, he's nobody's bitch. And he wears this, this shirt that says in big, big letters, nobody's bitch. Which is, like, if you're Jimmy Uso, you would just attack this guy just for disrespecting you. But that's not here nor there, right? So, nobody's bitch is not going to be uh, at ringside, which means that the other Uso... It's not going to be at ringside because, you know, fuck it, right? Uh, Roman Reigns doesn't trust him, essentially. Now, if this leads to a Roman Reigns versus Jimmy Uso feud, that's just ridiculous. But it is what it is. No one really cares. So basically, now that Jimmy Uso is back, he's saying, like, you know, uh, we're not going to acknowledge this guy because I don't want to be his bitch. And I'm like, wasn't it the other way around? Like, when he was beating, like, the good Uso, the bad Uso came out and, like, threw in the towel. You know what I mean? What the hell's going on here, right? So uh, Roman Reigns with the blue eyes... Uh, comes out and goes to wrestle Cesaro. Now, Roman Reigns was looking a little pudgy. I'm not going to lie. He was looking a little pudgy. Now, like, he still looks great. He's still, like, a muscular guy, obviously. He's still in great shape. But it's like, I know what Cesaro is capable of. And I know that Cesaro would destroy this guy in real life. You know what I mean? Like, like I just know this, you know? So it's really hard to present Roman Reigns not only as, like, the favorite, which is understandable because he's a champion, but to present him as if he's like this super favorite, right? Like Michael Cole was listing how the how Roman Reigns has been in 39, and I guess now 40, uh, world title matches in his career, right? Main evented half a dozen WrestleManias, while Cesaro has never had a title shot ever, right? Now, here's the thing about that. I get it. Cesaro doesn't have the it factor that Roman Reigns definitely does have, you know? Cesaro doesn't look as good. I mean, let's be real. Like, Roman Reigns is a good-looking guy. I mean, I, I know part of that is also his blue eye contacts, man, but it is what it is. He looks like a complete goof with those. But he's a, he's a handsome guy, and he's very masculine. Cesaro is masculine as well, but he's, a, he's bald. You know, he doesn't have much charisma, or at least they don't let him show it. But I know that Cesaro is a freak of nature. And I know that if Roman Reigns and Cesaro played, like, 100 random sports, Cesaro would win in all of them. Like, I don't even think Roman Reigns would beat him in one. You know what I mean? Like, I think Cesaro is just superior to Roman Reigns athletically and, like, on, on an instinctual level, right? So it's like, I know Cesaro's stronger. I know Cesaro's faster. I know Cesaro has more cardio. I know he's tougher. You know what I mean? Like, I know all these things are true about Cesaro. Like, I, I know he's more athletically driven, you know? And he's more, like, he has better timing and all these other things. So it's like, even though, even though Reigns might be a bit bigger in terms of, like, his, his width, like... Cesaro would obviously whoop his ass. Like, it's not even close, you know? In my opinion, at least, right? Like, 
Obviously, I understand that being a badass in real life and being good at wrestling means absolutely nothing. Because if that were the case, then people like Riddick Moss or Mojo Rawley wouldn't be jobbing to like, I don't know, R-Truth, right? Who's like half their size. Wouldn't, wouldn't be jobbing to like Tozawa, you know? They'd be, they'd be beating up people like Roman Reigns, you know? But it is what it is. But nonetheless, it was too hard to really accept the, 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 the difference, the disparity of the booking. Where it's like, dude, Cesaro is probably one of the toughest guys you have. And he's out there. This is his first main event. And here's the problem. It's not just like his first main event. It's he doesn't deserve the main event this time. You know, Cesaro didn't get this nice organic push. He's literally a, a smarks wet dream, you know. He's just a guy that's like, okay, we're going to give it to him now because he's been around for a while. You know, I often speak about the Mark Henry situation where people like Mark Henry stay for a while and then they get, they get rewarded with a good push storyline when they become champion, right? Like Mark Henry's Hall of Pain uh, push is very memorable, but it didn't just start out of nowhere. It, and it, it explained itself, you know? This thing, what, like the whole Cesaro thing is like, Cesaro's been waiting his whole moment for this opportunity. What? Why hasn't he been fighting for this opportunity? How about win the Royal Rumble once in a while? You know, and you would have your title shot. So like, it's not like he's been held down because in kayfabe, there is no you're being held down. In kayfabe, it's like, dude, every year at the at minimum, every year you have an opportunity to go to the Royal Rumble. Now, if you can't win it, you can't win it. You're not good enough, right? You know, someone's going to win it. Roman Reigns just won it, you know? But they kept talking about how Cesaro does this for a passion and Roman Reigns does it for the paycheck, which is weird because plenty of times that hasn't been the story, but that's either here or there. So basically, Cesaro's first opportunity is just gifted to him by virtue of the fact that there's no one on SmackDown to wrestle Roman Reigns. That's what it is. You know? The match was pretty good, though. Uh, there were a lot of false finishes. But a lot of the false finishes were basically, basically, basically uh, Cesaro, like, almost passing out or not passing out or fighting out of the guillotine or not fighting out of the guillotine. There was a lot of that going on. You know what I mean? Um, but nonetheless, they were effective. And I think they were more effective than kicking out at two and a half. Because they actually, they actually uh, weren't that impactful. Like, you know, you're not going to get these like super cheers. But it was like, it did give you that, that, that idea of like, oh, it's almost, it's almost over. It's over. Like Cesaro can't do anything else, you know? So, but he got out of it more times than I expected him to. I'm not going to lie. Long story short, though, Roman Reigns uh, put the guillotine on him and made him tap out. Or not tap out, but he like passed out, I guess. So that was the end of that. After the match, Seth Rollins comes out. This was really stupid. Rollins comes out and laughs at Roman Reigns' face and then attacks Cesaro. I honestly thought Rollins, Rollins was going to turn face and attack Roman Reigns and be the next challenger. But he just attacked Cesaro. He just remained healed. It was really weird. Because it's like, why would he do this at a pay-per-view? This never happens at a pay-per-view. Yeah. But whatever. It is what it is. Like, I guess it made sense just because this felt more like a SmackDown anyways. So whatever, right? Uh, the show was absolute trash. I wasn't entertained by it at all. Um, the fact that WWE has moved away from the pay-per-view model really shows with events like this. It really shows. Like, if you compared this to uh, Blood and Guts, AW Blood and Guts, Blood and Guts is like obviously better. You know what I mean? It obviously was better. It obviously felt like a bigger deal. And that was just an episode of Dynamite. So WWE's big events are not good, motherfucks. They are not good. And next up, what do we have? What do we have? Uh, fucking, uh, I don't even know what we have next. What, what do we have next, motherfucks? So there you have it. I mean, I don't tell you. We have, I guess, I guess Hell in a Cell is next. I don't know. No one cares. Um, and it looks like still no audience for Hell in a Cell. Anyways, motherfucks, that was it. Uh, sorry if this video felt a little bit unmotivated. It kind of was because this pay-per-view was unmotivated. Yeah, like, I, I honestly, like if I could go back in time, I wouldn't watch it. So if you're someone that hasn't watched it and is debating on watching it, just don't. You know what I'm saying? Do yourself a favor, cut and don't, motherfucks. All right, see you guys.